It's a glorious night for Monday night football in the mid-state as the Titans welcome Monday night football to Nissan Stadium for the first time in four years. Tannehill gives Henry on the right side. There he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, 76 yards. Derrick Henry, touchdown, Titans. Allen looking, hit as he throws, ball up in the air, intercepted, fire. Gives Henry on the left side to the 10, to the five, to the end zone. Touchdown, Titans. Tighten up. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel show. It's a short week. Titans have to get ready to play again on Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs. So filling in for Mike Vrabel, Coach Dave McGinnis, you picked the right week. Uh, I can't quit smiling. <laughs> I mean, this is so great. I'm glad to be here. Titans beat Buffalo 34 to 31. Let's take a look at Mike Vrabel's six pack. Let's get right to the plays. Second quarter, Titans down six to nothing. You're saying, when are they going to get some offense? How about now? Now, this explosive play. You know, explosives are big in this league. Only back in the league you can count on for an inside zone handoff being an explosive. We are witnessing history with this guy. And look at the blocks. Let's give a lot of credit to this blocking unit. But this dude, he is eating stripes right there. It's not even fair when he gets out like that. This is beautiful. 76 yards on the play for Derrick Henry. Before that, the Titans had 24 yards of total offense. They needed a jump start. They got it. It's 13 to 10 later in the second quarter when the defense provides a jump start, Coach McGinnis. Yes, sir. Let's look at this. Let's watch Kevin Byard. He's got a GPS to the ball. Ball's in the air. This is really a nice catch because the, the, the back that they were throwing, it got tipped. It got tipped. The back was trying to play defense. Kevin Byard went up and make a great hands catch. Watch him go up with both hands and just charge it and go. He didn't wait for it. He didn't sit and wait for it. He went and got it. This was a huge, huge play. Danico, play. Danico Autry hits Josh Allen's arm. Byard with the catch returns it to the 11-yard line. The Titans get a run on first down that takes them down to the four-yard line. Everybody thinks on second down it's going to be Derrick Henry. Surprise. Well, yeah, look, this offense uh, – Really did a nice job mixing this stuff up because this is a good defense. And, and look, let me tell you something about Ryan Tannehill. We talk about tight and tough. As Ashley Farrell said, this is Tannehill tough. This is outstanding. And the great finger roll call by you. This guy, you can count on him no matter how hard it gets. This is beautiful. So the Titans at this point take the lead. They trail 20 to 17 at halftime, 23 to 17 as they play in the third quarter. They're driving. They know they need points. And Coach Mack called it on Titans Radio, said you got to go on fourth down. And the Titans convert a huge fourth and two. Yeah, they got half of it. And then right here, this is a really nice shot here. This is a bang eight shot over the middle. And the thing, this is timing. And also, you've got to be able to make a combat catch. Look at the combat catch that number 11 makes. And he really, really came alive this ball game, Mike. You were talking about it in the second half. Big part of this second half, A.J. Brown. Seven catches for 91 yards, all in the second half for A.J. Brown, and it sets up Derrick Henry to go again, this time from three yards out. How can you do go wrong by giving it to Derrick Henry? I mean, seriously, we're up there in the box. Everybody in the stadium stands know that he's going to get the ball. Guess what he does? Touchdown anyway. All right, so the Titans score a touchdown there, make it 24-23, but the Bills come right back with eight points. They take a 31-24 lead into the fourth quarter. Titans cut it to 31-27. They need to get the ball back. How about a sack from Jeffrey Simmons? Oh, big Jeff played a, a tremendous ball game today. You know, he, he kind of came of age today on a big stage, huge stage. Watch this power rip. First of all, he's getting held. He's getting held for about three seconds. Watch this left arm power rip that he puts on and then just gets to the quarterback, 
Calf ropes him around the ankles. This is a beautiful play. Jeffrey Simmons stepped up big tonight with a lot of his other defensive teammates. There will be more Jeffrey Simmons to come in this segment. Titans get the ball back. They drive 70 yards to take the lead. Derrick Henry for the third time. This 13-yard run is a thing of beauty. Uh, it, I, I, I can't wait to watch. Look, for this, when this thing comes on, you're going to see this guy here, he just got a, he's got a nose for the end zone. He understands how to get it in there, and he gets stronger as the game goes on. There was no place to run for a minute. He shoulders the guy. You're not going to tackle this guy with an arm tackle. Look at the blocks. Look at the blocks, and look at the effort that this front is making on the left side, Mike, getting off the ball. They're driving everybody. There's a stiff arm. That's a little baby stiff arm. That's a touchdown. All right, 34-31 Titans, 3.05 to go. The only problem is the Titans left the Bills too much time. They drive to the Titans' two-and-a-half-yard line, 22 seconds to go, fourth and a half yard, and here's Jeffrey Simmons again. You got a 6'5", 245-pound quarterback. Watch Jeffrey Simmons knock the guard right back into the quarterback's lap and then make the play. This was as a great a goal line stand as I've seen. I've seen a few in my career. This was outstanding. For the time, the place, the magnitude of what that was, that was unreal. Titans also get outstanding looks on the inside from Naquan Jones and Amani Bledsoe, but it's Jeffrey Simmons who makes the play. Titans 4-2 and two after a 34-31 win over Buffalo. Exciting. Exciting, and just it, you had to have it, but to get it at that way and to get it on Monday Night Football, Mike, couldn't be better. The atmosphere was unbelievable. Cheryl Crow was the 12th Titan. When we come back, I get a chance to visit with Coach Mack's new best friend, Cheryl <laughs> Crow. I'm serious. The Mike Vrabel Show continues. <laughs> The 12th Titan has always been a special part of pregame at Nissan Stadium. Last night's 12th Titan, extra special. Music legend Cheryl Crow. Cheryl Crow has made Nashville her home since 2005, but we didn't find out that she was really a big Titans fan until about two years ago. Her sons, Wyatt and Levi, have made sure that she follows the two-tone blue, and she made sure we knew it right before a big playoff game. I wonder if in this whole school if I could find some Titans fans. Two years ago, we're getting ready to play Baltimore in the playoffs. And all of a sudden, all these videos start showing up online, people wishing us well. We're big underdogs. Baltimore's the number one seed. And then there's a Cheryl Crow video that just totally took us aback. You're in a Derrick Henry jersey. That's right. You're at Lipscomb Academy. That's right. And you're not only telling everybody to tighten up, but you're getting all these kids revved up. And for all of us, it was huge to see you do this on our behalf, so thank you. First of all, let me say revved up is an understatement. And then secondly, let me say that my then third grader was mortified. Mortified? You know. Oh yes, yeah. Why? Um, you know, you want your mom to be like all the other moms, be normal not to come running in the gym with a film crew behind you. He's actually the reason that I'm so in, not only into the Titans, but into sports in general. He just loves it. And his dream would be to play alongside Derrick Henry. And so you get this because you grew up in a small town and yes. I grew up in a small town outside of Nashville. And we never thought we'd have an NFL team here. And now for all these kids, like your sons to grow up with an NFL team and Derrick Henry's here and Ryan Tannehill's here and yeah. all these players. How fun is that? It's really fun. And you know, I grew up wanting to emulate rock stars, right? Maybe not the best role models. And I've, I've really come to understand with two boys how important sports figures are and their dedication and their level of work commitment. And it makes a big difference. All right, so Derrick Henry or Giannis? I know oh, you love the Milwaukee don't Bucks. Don't do this to me. I know, right? Don't. You love the Bucks, though, right? We love us some Bucks. King Henry and the Greek Freak. That's that's two pretty yes. good ones right there, right? Yes, yes. Levi, uh, he has he has a couple of jerseys on his wall, and one of them is 
Jonathan one of them is Derrick Henry. And is Levi going to try Levi's to take my funny, job? Man. Is that... I'm going to say to you right now that your job. I'm in um, trouble. You may be in trouble. Yeah. yeah. My 14 year old has already given my bass player notice that when he gets to be 18, that he wants to be in mom's band. Mm. Of course, I say when you get to be 18, you're going to want to be in anybody's band but your mom's. <laughs> but Levi is a warrior. Now, he's going to worry up until at least the third or fourth quarter. He may worry until like the last minute but he's gonna believe that the Titans are gonna pull it out. Now that was a treat, getting to sit down and talk sports with Cheryl Crow. Want another treat? Dave McGinnis is back. Coach Mack has the keys to knocking off this weekend's opponent, the Kansas City Chiefs. And Mike Grable Show continues. This is the Bet MGM studio. This is Dave McGinnis. You saw him earlier in the program. You know who that is. <laughs> Time now for the Nissan Keys, and you certainly know the opponent, the Kansas City Chiefs, the two-time defending AFC champions. They come in here three and three. Coach Mack, first key to the game. First key of the game, you've got to contain Kansas City's explosives. This is a very explosive offense. They've got playmakers all over the field. And what you've got to be able to do, Mike, when this quarterback escapes both horizontally and vertically, you've got to plaster coverage. You've got to do that downfield because it's just huge. Explosive plays are, are really a, an equalizing factor in NFL games limit these guys explosive does it help the titans that they saw another athletic quarterback with a great arm in josh allen on monday night it's the same principles and it's the same principles in the back end and it's the same principles up front and the biggest thing that has to happen mike is is the off schedule plays off schedule plays really turn into backyard ball downfield you got to plaster your man and you got to stay on him. all right so key number two in the nissan keys has to be about patrick mahomes right well you've got to cage rush him and by cage rush i mean this whether you four or five man rush, everybody has to be very, very lane disciplined because here's what he can do, Mike. He can not only escape outside. Everybody thinks you don't let a quarterback escape outside. Well, if he escapes horizontally, at least he's cutting the field in half for himself. He escapes vertically up inside, then the whole field is open to him. So when you cage rush, your outside rushers have to be able to get to quarterback depth, Flatten out, squeeze that off. Your inside rushers, very, very gap conscious. And what they can't do, they can't peek. They can't peek to the opposite side because he will take those A and B gaps very quickly up inside. All right. Kansas City is going to score points. They always score points. Even if you play great defense, they're going to score points. So the Titans have to score points. When you get to the high red zone against this team, you got to score touchdowns because that's going to be imperative. When you work it down the field against Kansas City's defense, Mike, high red zone, which is, which is designated as the 20-yard line to the five-yard line, you've got to score. You've got to score touchdowns because you're not going to overcome this team kicking field goals. They average about 34 points a game. You can't kick 13 field goals in the game. You've got to be able to score touchdowns when you get to the red zone. That would be a record. That'd be a record. That'd be a record. All right, so those are Coach Max Nissan keys to the game. We see how good he is. Now we're going to really see how good he is. It's time for Delta Dentals. Can you guess this Titan? Mike Vrabel, I think he's two of four on the year. Is that right? Close to that? All right, let's see if Coach Mack can go one for one. Let's take a look at let's this go. week's Delta Dental. Can you guess this Titan? Now just You don't have to blurt it out because we're going to go to break. Do you think you know? No. <laughs> but I'm studying well, on it. Well, fortunately, you've got several seconds. I'm We're going to go to break, and when we come back, we reveal this week's Delta Dental Can You Guess This Titan Titan on the Mike Vrabel Show. Stay tuned. Delta Dental, can you guess this Titan? We put that to Dave McGinnis, who's filling in for Mike Vrabel on a short week. So now, can you guess this Titan? Coach Mack, do you have a guess? Yes. Okay, good. Rashawn Evans. Rashawn Evans. Let's see, is he correct? Derek Henry. Close. Close. <laughs> Not even close. Not close. Well, they both went to Alabama. Well, that's close. And they play for the Titans. You know what? I used to have a television show when I was a head coach. I never had to guess anybody smile. I, much, much props to Mike Vrabel. Okay, so talk about, <laughs> talk about what Derrick Henry is doing right now. You had Emmett Smith with you in Arizona. 
you coached with the Bears when Walter Payton was doing there. You have seen historic stretches. This guy, what he's doing is remarkable. Mike, we're seeing history right now. We really need to appreciate what we're seeing, what this guy is doing. He's on a pace right now. I mean, I know all the numbers that have been out there, but when you really sit and, and look at him, you really kind of marvel at what he is doing because everybody that we play, they're, they're geared to stop him. You've got eight, eight and a half men in the box. You and I broadcast all these games. Every, every time you hear me say they've got eight in the box, they're loaded up front. He just keeps pounding. Special, special player. We are witnessing history right now. And a great teammate and a special guy. Well, that's all he is. He's a, he's a great teammate. And his, he is really – and, you know, sometimes you, you hear him say he's a great teammate. He really puts the team before himself. You know, it's not a me thing. It's really true about him. You and I get to watch practice every day. We see how this guy works, and we see how his teammates react to him. This guy is much respected for all the right reasons. We are lucky to be able to cover his games. When we come back, Amy Wells joins us with the Titans Files and another guy we're very lucky to be able to cover. Thank you. A.J. Brown. We were excited when they drafted A.J. Brown in 2019. Oh, I, was, I was really excited, really excited vetting him because he reminded me so much of a player I drafted when I was the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals in Anquan Bolin, and we know what kind of career he had. But all the same traits that I saw in Anquan when he came out, A.J. exemplified those when he came out of Mississippi. Physical catcher, tremendous with the ball in his hands, great combat catcher, and just relentless, relentless as a runner. And plus, you could just tell the way he competed down in and down out is the way he's competing down in and down out in the National Football League. He's a force to be reckoned with. As a defensive coordinator, when they, uh, they come into the ball games, they're going to have to know where A.J. is because he can hurt you really quick. I love this segue because A.J. Brown is the subject of the Titans files. And Amy Wells has gotten another former Cardinals wide receiver who played for Dave McGinnis to give the insight. Tannehill's in the gun. He's got Henry on his left hip. Blitz coming. Tannehill firing. Pass caught. A.J. Brown at the 15. A.J. Brown's performance on Monday should come as a shock to no one. After all, production is what number 11 has been all about in his first two years as a Tennessee Titans wide receiver. Rob Moore has seen every one of Brown's snaps since he came into the NFL, so he's hardly shocked by what happened on Monday. AJ is, he's phenomenal because he's almost ambidextrous in both hands. In terms of, he, he's equal. You know, most of us are, are either right hand dominant or left hand dominant. He can catch the ball with either hand and, and, and not bat an eyelash. AJ's strengths are uh, hands down, his play strength, his ability to catch the football, uh, his ability to make contested catches, and his ability to run after the catch. The thing I enjoy most about coaching AJ is he's so coachable. I mean, there's nothing he won't do. Uh, he's extremely curious as a player. You know, always trying to find new ways to get better. 12 o'clock at night, I'll get a text message for it, of a video of, of some drill he saw that, that he likes. He's always, you know, you know, searching to find different ways to get better. And uh, you love players with that kind of curiosity. I think the biggest improvement is AJ knows who he is as a, as a player now, in terms of what his identity is and what makes him who he is. His first couple of years, he's trying to figure it out. And I think now he really truly understands who he is as a player, what his strengths are, um, and he's constantly working on and develop those things uh, that he wants to get better at. We all have our favorite plays from our favorite players. You have your favorite Derrick Henry run or Ryan Tannehill pass or Kevin Byard interception. For A.J. Brown, there have been many special plays early in his career, but for everyone, just one play stands out. Oh, without question, it's the Baltimore game. Tannehill looks, fires, Brown makes the catch at the 10, spinning, driving his way to the 5, oh, oh. into the end zone! Oh, wow. How did he do it? Wow! Touchdown Titans! Arthur, one, Brown, carrying them! Well, he broke inside and, 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 and caught the, uh, the now route and uh, basically put the team on his back and got in the end zone. What people got to understand is up to that point, you know, he was, wasn't playing all that great either. But he knew it was a moment in the game. We needed him to step up big. He was disappointed how he was playing. And he overcame that, made a play for us, and then continued to play that way the duration of the game. So, you know, he's a guy that when he turns it on, 
you're special. When you watch his hand-eye coordination and how you go out and watch practice and watch him catch the ball with one hand, with both hands, and all those things, you play catch with him, you can see the velocity on the ball. You see how he can track the deep ball and, and, and just, you know, the football in general. All those things lend to being a great baseball player. And then when you look at his power and his strength, you know, he's a guy who, who could probably knock it out of the park as well. You know, this is his life, and, 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 and everything he does revolves around that. Um, so I'm not surprised by that. Anytime you have guys that have that kind of talent and ability and love football, usually you're going to have some success. Titans and the Chiefs, Sunday at noon, right here at Nissan Stadium. We're on the air on Titans Countdown at 11 a.m., that's 104.5 The Zone in Nashville. You can hear this man, Dave McGinnis, and me, Mike Keith, and our whole crew. We'll see you 